Good morning. Uh, Art Hedrick with uh, Product Mining. I wanted just to pick up on a couple points that James had mentioned for my section, which basically takes uh, the vehicle from when we originally introduced the GT concept all the way back in 2011 in Geneva to LA when we showed it in uh, that fall, the same concept model, was really kind of to test the American's market appetite for this uh, GT concept of a vehicle. And of course, we got rave reviews that went through the whole show circuit. And uh, so then the assignment fell to uh, the product guys to figure out how to put this car together and make a business case in bring it to fruition. So for uh, the product plan, we worked very closely, of course, with the engineers, uh, the designers, but really it came down to a formula that the product plan that we put together that focused really on three key areas. First is basically the style and the design, which was a compelling uh, vehicle that we saw uh, at the, on the show circuit, really to pay true homage and make sure that the vehicle delivered on what that con concept looked like. So a lot of effort went around to really defining this Gran Turismo concept and understanding it, uh, but also celebrating the fact that this is a rear-wheel drive vehicle, so proportions. Uh, the Sportback Utility, which was also one of the key concepts for us to deliver the ability to uh, have some practicality to it as opposed to just being a sports performance sedan. Uh, performance, this was a big one, and uh, James has already mentioned the importance that Albert Bierman placed on the fact that the car needs to uh, drive, handle, and perform as well as it looks. The payoff to the, <coughs> the design of uh, Promise. And also, because it's our latest vehicle, we wanted to make sure we were up to date with all of the latest technologies. But more importantly, going into the space, the, the amenities, uh, the ambiance, and the design overall had to be at that same level of the other premium vehicles that we used uh, during the reference. Uh, from a reference standpoint, uh, these are the vehicles that we uh, use as our reference points, our benchmarks going through the, uh, during the development uh, uh, process. The Audi A5, the Audi A7, uh, both of the BMW coupes, the uh, 440 Grand Coupe and also the 6 Series uh, Grand Coupe. Uh, the Asian uh, reference points, which were uh, Q50 and the Lexus GS F Sport. Even the Porsche Panamera, which we think is probably the ultimate definition of this kind of a GT concept. And this is the end result, the vehicle you'll be driving today. Uh, it was a six year journey. Uh, a lot of de decisions, uh, thousands of decisions that um, uh, we weren't involved with all of them, but during the major ones, we really had to push forward on this mantra of delivering to the market a GT car that was true to the concept. And I think a lot of it is uh, comes down to, first and foremost, the proportions, which means uh, the stance, uh, the overall ba balance, and some of the details in scale. And this is really where we work closely with uh, Gregory Guillaume, who James mentioned in his piece, he was uh, he's head of design, he's head of the studio in Frankfurt, where the original concept came together. But also, uh, he put together the uh, production version, the car we're driving today. So, stand specifically uh, along wheelbase. Uh, there was a lot of effort went into this whole idea of celebrating the fact that this is a rear-wheel drive car. This key dimension between uh, the front axle and the front of dash. Uh, this proportion between this, and we showed it in the video on the outset, and the very short front overhang is a proportion you can only get in a rear-wheel drive configuration. And that was a very, very key point. Uh, this very nice uh, fastback silhouette, uh, these great athletic haunches, we pulled that right off of the uh, concept vehicle. And this muscular form over the rear wheels where the back end tucks in a little bit. All these little details, uh, Gregory was really, really a stickler on, on the packaging, and we worked directly with him. Uh, of course, probably for us, the, the main point is the, the long wheelbase. And I think for us, uh, this delivers two main points. Uh, this is a, a pictogram uh, of our dimensions relative to the reference set and uh, bring your attention to the wheelbase portion. Uh, relative to some of the other vehicles there, we're basically the longest in the segment right up there with an Audi A7. So this isn't necessarily a compact car, uh, which is kind of uh, one of the first things you notice when you see the vehicle uh, and, and for the first time. And Gregory was really a sticker of making sure that that proportion, when you look at the car from across the parking lot for the first time, makes that first impression. And we experienced it when we saw the vehicle for the first time in the studio. Uh, James had mentioned about pulling off the sheet. When we go into our uh, studio in uh, Namyang in Korea, you walk in from one side, and the vehicle is about the distance across the parking lot when you walk up to it. And it was 
stunning within the first 13 seconds of seeing the car. It was that uh, remarkable. And a lot of that is because of the proportions. Uh, the other point of that long wheelbase is, in addition to the, the stance and the presence, it really delivers on the fact that the car is a high-speed performance vehicle, and it adds stability during high-speed driving conditions. And then, of course, also uh, a great rear seat package. So we're longer in wheelbase than the Audi S, uh, uh, the BMW 440, and also, interestingly enough, the Lexus GS, which is in the mid-category. Longer overall length than both the Audi, the 440, and the Q50. So the size is, is, is quite generous. Uh, the interior ambiance, I mentioned a lot about the fact that this vehicle had to deliver that same interior experience uh, that the exterior design uh, promises. And here we spent a lot of effort, uh, mainly with the finance guys and the bean counters, to make sure that we're using authentic, real materials on the interior. And here leather is standard on the vehicle. Uh, a lot of the pieces in the center console and the trim parts are all real aluminum. So we wanted to make sure that everything that the customer touches and feels is authentic and true to that concept. Uh, here we also accented some of this uh, idea with the idea of craftsmanship. So we put um, hand stitching on uh, many of the parts on the interiors and on the door panel, on the steering wheel, uh, top of the console lid, you can see it across the seats, even across the top of the IP, really to kind of drive home this point of craftsmanship and authentic materials. And from an overall design standpoint, I think the other part, uh, point to mention here is uh, the seating position is really true to that GT concept. The vehicle is very low slung. Uh, when you slide into the vehicle, you really feel you're part of this cockpit. Uh, from an overall design standpoint, the, the designers were really influenced by this, this shape here, which we refer to as uh, kind of like an airplane wing. And this was kind of the, the, the foundation of the overall interior design. <clears throat> Topped off with these nice uh, metal ring uh, gauges, this nice gauge cluster, which is uh, perfectly uh, proportioned from the, the driver. Uh, topped off with these iconic center vents, uh, the round, it, it's, they're very simple, it's a simple design, very functional, but also very iconic, and it's kind of a focus point that draws your eye to the middle and it kind of gives you that cockpit feeling. When you sit in the vehicle, I mentioned it's low slung, you can see here the seating position is relatively low uh, across many of the vehicles, but look at this very nice cockpit feel. When you sit in the vehicle, you see out over this long, powerful hood, it kind of gives you this feeling of uh, power but also the mirrors uh, align perfectly with the top of that IP, so it's almost like a wing extension across the uh, interior. Uh, we were also uh, careful to work closely with our uh, seat and design engineers to make sure that the seats live true to that GT concept of long distance motoring. Uh, the drive today, uh, the reason we're here, the reason we're going to the test track is specifically to highlight this point of going for a longer distance at high speeds in comfort and in style. And the, the trip out there today is a couple of hours. We go up through the mountains, but also a section on the interstate. And part of this is uh, the multi-use function of this type of vehicle. We've added a couple features. This is a new one we have, is air cell lumbar with width adjusting bolsters. So if you're in on an interstate and you're going for a long drive, you can lay the seat open a little bit more for comfort and convenience. If you're going in through the twisties and you have a little bit more performance and you want the seat to hug you a little bit tighter, you can move those bolsters in. It's multi-adjustable. Uh, we have a 16-way power driver seat, so you can get that exactly right position. Paid up a lot of attention to details such as the uh, dead pedal and accelerator pedal, the placement of the steering wheel, you can really get in that nice position. And a lot of this means a lot of engineering work and a lot of detail work with packaging engineers to work on that. <clears throat> I mentioned we have leather standard. We have two grades of leather. There's also an ultra-soft, highly durable Napa leather, which will be on the trim version that you'll be driving today. Uh, and these are all hand-selected highs. The top materials is really what we were going after to make we were sure we were at the same level as the premium uh, European base. Here's a shot of the interior. Part of the other story is, of course, uh, technology. I mentioned that at the outset, that this uh, we wanted to put the latest and the greatest here. We have our uh, a new version of an entertainment system, but also an audio system uh, with our partners at Harman Kardon. It's a fantastic sounding system. We couldn't be more proud of how this, uh, this system turned out. Uh, 720 watts, 15 performance speakers. Uh, because space is really at a premium, we wanted to maximize the interior utility, uh, both in the cargo area for the passengers. We've moved the subwoofers underneath the two front seats. And this presented an engineering challenge in the fact that you need a large um, capacity uh, resonance chamber to really deliver that strong, punchy bass. Well, if you put them under the seats, there's not a lot of room down there. So the, 
we've created a resonance chamber. It's about seven and a half liters on each side, total of about 15 liters that moves up the bead color and down the side sills inside the vehicle, inside the body of white. And that is really an interesting idea because we're still able to deliver that rich, powerful, punchy base while at the same time maximizing cargo space. Uh, the latest technology, we've used this in some of our other vehicles, Clarify Digital Music. Uh, it's an algorithm that expands and decompresses or unpacks all of the digital music that we're listening to on either MP3 or Sirius XM. That's a very compressed signal. This helps to, to uh, restore some of that fidelity in the range that the music was intended to have from the beginning. Uh, also, Quantum Logic Surround. This is a new technology that uh, we've introduced on some of our other vehicles, but it helps the, the, the driver set the sound stage. If you want to be in the middle of the audience uh, and listening to it as a, a band or the music is performed in front, or you can also switch it so you write what, uh, what the uh, musicians would hear if you're right in the middle of the band. So you can play around with that. Uh, we're also providing a, um, a thumb drive with some reference music on it. It's in the vehicles already. Um, if you don't want to listen to it during the twisty roads, there's a nice stretch on the backside heading to the test track. It's about 30 minutes. And it's a nice time to experiment with it and try it. There's a small button uh, on the IP. It's uh, approximately here, not exactly, but it says media on it. So when you get to the stage, just push that button. Uh, it's already preloaded. You can listen to very high fidelity music and uh, experience this firsthand. Uh, also, part of the technology story is our latest Uvo system. Uvo stands for Your Voice. It's our infotainment and telematic system. And here we're uh, featuring a whole host of uh, features available through a, uh, an app you download on the smartphone. Uh, also, it also includes heads-up display. We put this right in the center of the uh, IP so the customer can see it. It has really critical information such as uh, distance, uh, and also if you have a destination selected in the navigation system, it displays it right on the screen in front of you. Uh, this is the infotainment system I was mentioning earlier. Uh, a whole host of features, diagnostics, geofencing, also, for this version, we've introduced the Android Auto and CarPlay. So if you bring your cable along with you, you can plug it in and using your natural voice, make phone calls, uh, receive a lot of information. It's, uh, it's really nice. Also, part of the technology story is, of course, a whole suite of advanced driver assistance systems. And I won't go into all the detail. We put them on the slide here just to give you a sense of what's on the vehicle and around it. Everything for from a front radar and also uh, using a camera system, we refer to a fusion for the uh, autonomous emergency braking to rear radar sensors. Uh, needless to say, the vehicle is completely covered with a bunch of sensors around you. Hopefully you won't have to use any of the safety features, but everything there is available. Uh, probably also, probably the, the biggest point of the overall package size, mentioned the longer wheelbase, is it's room for two couples, uh, adult-sized couples going on a getaway weekend with their luggage. And this is really kind of the key point of that overall package. This is just a quick look at the comparison between some of the key dimensions for our Stinger relative to the reference set. Uh, from a standpoint of both front uh, leg room and rear leg room, we have overall total more leg room than either the Audi S5, the BMW 440, or the 640, so both of the BMW Grand Coups, and also the Porsche Panamera. And interestingly, we're bringing all of these vehicles to the test track today. There's a sample of each one of these, so you'll be able to uh, check them out in person next to a Stinger. Uh, they're also available for driving, so we're very, very confident about the vehicle. We'll have these available to you to, to uh, demonstrate. Mm -hmm.